something different. This is my first, I guess, how-to video, what's going on video, whatever. Um, I just recently bought a light plant. And for those of you that don't know what a light plant is, it is basically a the thing you see on the highway. <clears throat> there you go. Thing you see on the highway with the little wheels and the lights that fold up. Uh, X Air Force. And I managed to get the manual for it. Um, the fuel pump. It has a little electric fuel pump, and that was. Uh, that was bad so I've replaced that and then I found out the injection pump there's a blow-up diagram of it this injection pump the fuel shutoff rod is frozen probably from it sitting <clears throat> I've already taken this plate off and tried to try to get it to move I got to move some but it's not moving enough so I'm gonna attempt disassembly um, I looked online there was a like one video of this similar pump being torn down and zero commentary nothing nothing explaining anything um so i'm gonna try to actually do a how-to video <coughs> uh this goes on a kabuta d905 engine it's a little three-cylinder kabuta engine and um it's hooked to a 6kw generator in this light plant so hopefully with this exploded diagram and uh, pump on the table here, I can get it torn apart and we'll see if I can't get it fixed. Here we have the pump. We'll go ahead and disassemble it first thing. Take the uh, plate off of the fuel shut off rack. Use a Phillips screwdriver for that. Save these screws. Uh, let's see, I think I have one of those magnetic trays right here. I do, but it's full of stuff, so um, we'll take this little box here, put the screws in this little box. Alright, so that takes your plate off over your fuel rack. This is your fuel shutoff rack. So you see it has the three little slits in it which grabs these little balls in here. And the balls moving back and forth are what actually shuts your fuel off. Now see I cannot move that. That is frozen. So we're gonna have to take this apart and get this thing to free up. Alright so put that in the box. Next thing work on taking this clip off. <clears throat> As you can see it just kinda goes up underneath into these slots and holds these little pins in. So let's take a pair of pliers attempt to uh, pull that off of there. I may have better luck. No, there we go. Alright, so got that off. And be careful with it. You don't want to break it. Slide it off. There you go. That in the box. Now we've got these tiny little tiny little things. And they're stuck in there, but they're not really stuck. What you need to do is you need to push, hold on here, push, barely push on the bottom, push that in, and then you can get the little pin out. You don't want to lose them, they'll go flying everywhere. Put that pin, okay. Now the reason why I know this is I had taken it down this far when I first tried to get the rod to move. Now, you take the roller out. The roller's what rides on your cam or your your injection cam that's in there. And that's what pushes your pistons up and then and pressurizes the fuel. There's a little see that's probably the number for that spacer. There's a little spacer in there. You don't want to lose that. I'll show you what it looks like. It's just a, a little disc. Right? So that goes in there like that. Top of there. So that's number two. Set that off. Number one. Now I'm I'm basically saying from the uh, one, two, three, which I believe on the engine is the way that it is. I don't have the engine nearby currently. All right. So that first one was in there upside down. 
I must have done it because the one and two were this way and I only took uh, or one and three were this way with the number down because if if you look there's like a beveled edge and number 10 that must have been down and plus you can see the mark see the mark hole so I must have put number two back together again wrong but that's not that didn't keep it from working all right so those are out <clears throat> So now what you have down in there are these springs. Now I haven't taken it any farther apart than this, so uh, we'll uh, we'll learn this part together. I got some needle nose. Let's see if I can't get these out of here. Okay, all right. So I see what's going on. See the rod? This is the rod. See the hole? That's uh that's how you get it out. You got to push it down, and it'll pop out around around that shaft. That's what's holding it in there. I don't know if you don't push it down in there like that. <clears throat> Let's see if we'll pry it on with a screwdriver. Almost, almost had it that time. Apparently, you need to push it down. There we go. Hey, right in the box. You got your spring in there. Looks like, and there's a keeper. All right, now what's coming out is what's coming out is the actual shutoff. See that? So that little nubs what rides in your fuel rack. Right? Just like that. Turns it that way is fuel shut off, that way is fuel turned off. <clears throat> so what that does is you see how that's um you see how that's a, basically a rectangle. That fits down there on that rectangular shaft and that turns it. So the, what it'll do is when you shut the fuel off it covers covers the inlet hole. So it doesn't allow it to suck fuel anymore. So put that in the box. That's number one with its spring. Put the rack back. All right, now we go number two. So what I was doing was I was pressing down here near the hole. Um, it needs to kind of go. It needs to kind of go in and up under. So you need to kind of push down as you're pushing towards the top. And as you saw with that first one, it kind of popped out of there. Let's see. Get this. Get this in there. Okay, so that's a better way to do it. So what you want to do, I'll show you on this one. Put the screwdriver in there, push it away as far up as it'll go. See how it's more into the slot? And then you just need to work it work it until it pops off usually put the flat blade down there and push up or push down on it now this one may be harder because I think that plunger is actually stuck inward oh hey right in the box again so I'd make sure you had a little clearance or a little landing spot, I guess, for your stuff. All right, there's that spring. Yep, and there's that keeper. There's number three. Okay, so that's not stuck. It's it's the rod that's in there that does not want to turn. Now, whether there's a rust issue or my guess is the military loves using JP8 for everything. JP8's almost like a kerosene, and probably the o-rings that are in here have swollen a little bit because uh, the fuel and just sitting and not being used make sure you always have a rag handy mine was wedged under my little camera stand that I got built here all right so that part is done now probably gonna need yeah I'm gonna need these uh, Gonna need these safety Torex bits. I'm not sure I have those. 
So I'm going to have to go looking and see. I may have to go purchase some. But I mean, yeah, these things, that one moves a little bit. That one's not moving at all. That one moves. That one doesn't move at all either. So we'll go ahead and do a stopping point and then uh, let me look for these parts. I'll get back to it. Uh, I had to go out to Harbor Freight. It's like seven bucks. Has all the security bits in it. Should be everything we need. Get this baby open. All right. Got a ratchet with a drive. I think it's a T30 thing. Let's see. Oh, it's T35. Hopefully the paint's not a problem. All right. Now let's see if we can get this thing off. Of course, that would be too easy. If that fit in there. Just dropping stuff everywhere, aren't I? Anyway, that's a, it's a T30 security bit. So we'll take the number one out first. Which I think it actually does line up on the engine. Um, I think that I think that that is one, two, three. I don't recall. That's this is definitely towards the front. Now, apparently, you can mount these. Kabuta used them in different applications. You can mount them here or the fuel inlet. I would assume the fuel rack is on the other side. I don't know. Not 100% sure on that. Okay, so let's make note of that. See how it's elliptical. That's probably for the timing. So we'll just make sure that which whatever one we pull out, number one, we make sure we leave it. We put it back in that same place. Of course, you should be able to see where the paint marks are. However, <clears throat> I can always refer back to my video. So do a little pry in here. Get it past the O-rings. There you go. Up oh, and there's our problem. See the ring of rust. See you can even see the rust inside. So I may not be able to repair this. I may have to actually may have to actually get new assemblies I don't know I will attempt to take it all apart and clean it it looks like some water sat in there for a while all right so this is number one we'll set that over here we'll go ahead and get the others out yeah, it's a little bit of rust down in the bore too so we'll need to clean all that well, luckily that looks like it's just stain. So let's take out number two now. And remember number two was the only one that I think was uh, that I actually had any movement on.
Get them broke loose. Get it out by hand now. And I just realized I may, I hadn't taken one of these apart yet. I may be screwing up because putting a wrench on there and everything with them off the engine or off the injection pump may uh, you know if you had these two bolts it there we go yeah see that one's rusty too yeah see that plunger goes in but it doesn't come back down I may need a whole new pump well we'll see what happens I, I've cleaned stuff up before and brought it back so we'll we'll see how that goes but yeah, there's definitely rust in the uh, rust down in the bore there. But I think that's just I don't think it's actually rusty. I think that's just uh, let's see. I think that's just um, <clears throat> residue from the steel parts on the because I don't don't know if this part is actually steel. It's pretty light. Yeah, it cleaned up. Cleans up pretty good. Pretty easily. So I'll run a... Yeah, maybe a gun cleaning sock would be good. Not scour the bore so much, but... Knock this rust down. That's a lot better. way better all right so I'll still flush the heck out of this thing with a uh, with a good carb cleaner get this thing get this thing all de-rustified inside so, all right, now we'll move on to trying to disassemble one of these. And yeah, we'll see where we get. That's just wiping off, so you can tell where it did start to rust the body of the injector. But All right, so let's see if we can get one of these apart. All right, uh, nut on top of mine is a 17. Um, make sure you realize that most... Most of this stuff is going to be metric. I will attempt to do this with a crescent. But maybe it was better to leave it. <clears throat> okay, now. Just steady pressure. Got it undone. Now, according to the book, there's a spring in here, too. So, don't let it just fly anywhere. Oh, well. Okay, there's your spring. See the spring? Just your spring. Alright, I just blew it out. I can see light through it. So that's your... That's where your injection line goes. Oh, well, see now that moves. That moved pretty clear then. Let's see what we got in here. All right. Okay, so it's not really rusty. 
It's not really rusty. That's just really gummy. Like, like real old fuel. There's all these little ports in here and stuff. Now you see, see how that's on there and you see the T, right? So when that, remember when the fuel rod turns it, it blanks off the port. So even though your piston's running, when it's in the area where it can get fuel, fuel's getting in there, and then when you're shutting the engine down, it turns it blocks the port. That's how it shuts your engine off. No fuel, no run. But it just drops the pressure down. It doesn't totally run the engine out of fuel because the injectors are timed. It's a timed injection engine. So the injectors are they're there all the time and the pressure when the pressure hits them that's what tells them to fire. So each time one of these rides on the camshaft, one, three, five, one, three, two, whatever it is, um, then that's what that's what tells it to fire. So you got a little check valve in there. That may be stopped up, but there's definitely gunk on it. So what I'll do is I'll take these all apart. I'll separate them. I'll let them soak overnight. Let's see what the bore looks like in this one. Um. Eh, not too bad. I don't know if you can see down in there. It, it just, that'll take a good flushing. Alright, so this is number three. That looks clean. And the spring's fine. So, we'll set those off to the side for number three. Alright, so that's number three. We're going to soak these overnight. This is clear inside. Now, I'm going to see if I can find an O-ring kit. Because... You generally don't want to put stuff back together again with the old roll rings. Um, they get stiff over time. They get brittle over time. It just depends. And uh, again, with the JP8 that they were running this thing, there's no telling. <sighs> yeah, that's nice and clear. You can't see it, but I'll bring a flashlight in next time. Alright, so there's there's three. We'll soak that one. And we can probably just uh, use some carb cleaner. Or I like to use Marvel Mystery Oil. I think it does a pretty good job cutting through crud. Um, you can use gasoline. Just uh, you don't want to leave a little thing of gas, and it'll eat through a plastic bottle if you put it. Uh, <clears throat> Put it in a plastic bottle. You won't have a plastic bottle for very long. All right, so let's do number two. Yeah, that one's not moving at all. That one doesn't want to move at all. Yeah, I'm with too much force on it. Tighten that on there. Put it against the bench. Steady pressure. There you go. Easy peasy. Uh oh. I see an issue. If you look right here, I just found these two little pins sitting down here on the towel. That's another reason why you always use a towel. I know, you know, white's a little easier to see everything, but at least with a towel, you can find the parts you need now. Hmm. So that's not good. Let's consult the book. Alright. Let's look at the... Where is that pin? Let me see. Now see that little hole? I'm wondering. Yep. Alright. So that's your... That's to keep it from going all the way out. So now apparently... Oh! That one still has it. That one still has it in it. So. Saved. So make sure... When you take them out of the barrel, if you look out for that pin, it's in the it's in the back side right there. That's what keeps the keeps the rod from coming this way all the way. It puts it against that lip in there. There you go. So all right, so the pin goes back in the thing. Now those shouldn't really be uh, injector specific. 
So let's go ahead and take this one apart. This is number two. Now, it's, again, with the timing, you want to keep them correct so you know which one goes where. You can time it again. And all that does is change the advance. There's your washer. Now, see, that moved. I couldn't push that thing up into there. Save my butt. I go and barely tap on it, and and the thing falls right out. So you don't move very far. But every time, it's pressurizing. You see all the gunk. It's just it's just gunky, it's just gummy. Now see, here's another issue. Look at this one. See that little thing? That little thing? That's number three. It doesn't have that in there. Hmm. I'll have to keep an eye on it. I don't think I lost anything. Unless that piece is supposed to be farther. That's what it looks like. It looks like this piece is up high. And that piece is down low. It's the thing with a notch. Let's see. Let's see if I can dig that out of there. It's very gummy. God, I don't like it's gummy. Now maybe that's supposed to be up high. And uh, that one fell down in there. Now there's a lip. I'm wondering if we're missing something. Hmm. Huh. Well, let's see what number one looks like. There's our barrel and interior injection parts for number two. Keep them all together over here. Spring go in the box. Or not spring goes with that washer. All right. So let's take number one part and see what it looks like. Well, see, now it wants to move fine. Hmm. Very interesting. At least the barrels aren't rusted up. I mean, there was definitely rust in there. All right, okay, there's spring for number one. Now, see, this one's missing the washer. This one didn't have a washer in it. Oh, no, washer's right there. It's stuck to the... No? No, yeah, no. Yeah. That one didn't have a washer. Now, see, that's really, really odd. Maybe somebody's been in this pump before. That might be why it got surplus. Now, see, that's down low. That one's down in the bottom. Just like number three. So I don't know if that's the way it's supposed to be. Or if... Or what. Aha! Uh -huh. That part comes out. Which, if I'd looked at the instructions, nope, it doesn't show that part coming out. It doesn't show that coming out. But that's basically like your check valve, so the pressure blows past it against that spring pressure. All right, well, interesting. There's no washer in there, though. I wonder if that does mean that it's been apart before. There's number twos. Yeah, that's the same. Number three, this part is the best, in best condition. And a lot of diesel fuel, petroleum oil, all that stuff. Some of it has additives and that stuff's what turns to jelly and you can get um, 
the uh, they call it algae in diesel fuel, but it's actually it's actually a microbe that eats petroleum oil. Um, they've actually harnessed it to clean up old gas station sites and places like that. They'll pump it into the ground. They're doing it here. Uh, they'll pump it into the ground, and it it uh it'll actually eat up all the all the oil underground. Wow. Well, okay. Well, that's no no washer. That's very strange. Not one on the floor. Not one anywhere under the tools. I wonder if somebody's been in this pump before. I wonder. Alright, well that goes with number one.